What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Over the holidays, hopefully some of you may have received a brewing system or a beer kit or something to get you into this hobby and now you're wondering what do you do. Uh, well, I want to help start you out on the right track and give you some ideas for some of the easiest styles of beer to make from the major brewing regions of the world. There's over a hundred styles of beer out there from all over the world, but I want to narrow that list down to a few of the major, more popular ones that are much easier to brew than you might have initially anticipated. So many of you guys may also be getting beer kits or looking into recipe kits that you can buy from your local homebrew shop or buy online. And so I'm hoping this video can also point you in that direction uh, and let you know which are the easier kits to brew. So to preface this, none of these beers are particularly high in alcohol content. A high ABV beer is going to be a little bit tougher to ferment and you might need to do some special things to help move that beer along. None of them really require you to make major adjustments to your brewing water. So if you're working with spring water or you're working with tap water, you're going to probably make a fine beer for these styles without really doing too much to your water. None of these are going to require any sort of advanced mashing techniques like decoction mashing or step mashing. None of them are really going to require you to really pay too much attention to your fermentation. And none of them really have any sort of crazy uh, additional steps in them besides just making the beer, fermenting it, and packaging it. There's plenty of variety in this list covering from pale to dark beers, hoppy and malty styles, and also a lager or two because they're really not all that tough. I've brewed every single one of these beers at least one time, and I've gone through the process of figuring out which ones were the easiest. I'm picking three styles from each major significant brewing region of the world. Number one in the United States of America, number two, England, Scotland, and Ireland. Number three is Belgium, and number four is Germany. So for the United States of America, one of the easiest things you can make is an American wheat beer. Uh, this is actually a really easy style. It's a neutral style, uh, but a really good base for adding in things like fruits if you want to do that. So like making, um, you know, like a cherry or a raspberry wheat or a blueberry wheat, for example, you can easily add in a fruit puree or a fruit flavor extract into your beer to create a really nice easy drinking beer. Uh, these are very tolerant of fermentation temperatures and they honestly taste great. Number two is an American pale ale. I was thinking about adding in the classic West Coast American IPA, but usually those involve a dry hopping step, but you can get away with making an American pale ale without any extra effort involved in the fermentation. American pale ale, 99% of the time, the hops are gonna be added in during the boil, uh, which is a lot easier to control. You don't have to worry about oxidation in your fermentation from adding dry hops. You don't have to worry about hop creep or any of those things. You could also make a very good American pale ale with a single malt and a single hop, a smash beer. Those are some of the easiest recipes to make and they're almost always delicious. You can also make a hazy American pale ale to get you close to your hazy IPA targets that I've met many of you folks want to brew. So you can add in some flaked wheat or some flaked oats in addition to a base malt and give yourself a nice hazy beer that helps you avoid having to do that dry hopping step and oxidation risks and concerns. And the final one from the American styles that is just an absolute classic and easily one of the nicest beers you can brew with the least amount of effort. It almost always comes out perfect every single time is an American Amber Ale. It is an all around great beer for every time of year. A little bit hoppy, a little bit malty, just a nice easy beer to balance and uh, you just can't go wrong with them. So now moving on to England, Ireland, and Scotland. So the first one I want to talk about is just your standard generic English pale ale. So you probably had an ESB before. That's an example of an English pale ale. Um, something that can be made with one or two malts. It's really very similar to the American pale ale, um, just using English ingredients instead of American ones. Those different ingredients are gonna result in a different flavor that I personally actually really enjoy. They tend to be a little bit less hoppy, a little bit more malty, uh, but they're still very easy to drink and can oftentimes turn out to be a very tolerant beer uh, no matter what you put them through. The second style from that region is an Irish red ale. So if you're looking to get a beer ready for St. Patrick's Day and you want to impress your friends, an Irish red ale is really not a bad option. They're very easy to make. An Irish red ale is a pretty good option for uh, just a balanced hoppiness and maltiness. You get a nice, cool looking, striking red color and they're not hard to ferment either. 
And lastly, a Scottish ale. So something like the 40, 60, 80 shilling Scottish ale, um, or if you feel like really going for it, try a wee heavy. These are typically a darker ale, but they're not roasty. Scottish ales are really nice because they're like low alcohol, they're dark beers, but they're not full bodied like stouts and porters. And they're actually not really all that roasty. Uh, for the most part, they taste very similar to English pale ales, uh, but they are a little bit different color and they do have kind of a hint of roast. There's a very small amount of it. You're only adding a small amount of roasted grain so you're not gonna get the astringency you would get out of a stout uh, or a porter and it's gonna be very easy to ferment just like the rest of these. So now moving in for the Belgian ales. Uh, Belgian ales are some of my favorite beers of all time. They're actually the beers that got me into home brewing in the first place. So the easiest one I think that you could possibly make is actually a Saison. Um, so Saisons are a pretty crafty style. It's a really, really wide room for doing whatever the hell you want with a Saison. It can be dark, it can be light, it can be low ABV, it can be high ABV, it can be malty, it can be hoppy, it can be sour or fermented with wild yeast, or you can ferment it with a classic Belgian Saison yeast. There's really a lot of room to do whatever you want. And for that reason, they're so easy to make. Um, Saison yeast is also very tolerant of hot temperatures. So if you live in a place that's warm and you can only ferment in the 70s or the 80s, you're gonna make a great Saison with those fermentation temperatures. So feel free to have at it. The number two is gonna be a Trappist single. This is a Trappist beer. Trappists in Belgium make some of the best beers in the world. The singles are typically like a low ABV version of a Belgian triple. So you get a ton of that flavor, but none of the alcohol and none of the extra fermentation concerns that you're gonna have from fermenting a high ABV beer. It actually works out very nicely. These should be about four to 6% ABV, and they are absolutely loaded with flavor. You might see them marketed as a Potter's beer as well. That's another version of the same type of beer. And lastly from Belgium, a Belgian blonde, something similar to like a Leffe blonde, uh, if you've probably had that before. This is a similar type of beer to the Potter's beer, but with a different flavor subset. You're typically gonna get something more like a banana clove character out of this, a little bit more spiciness perhaps. They're also a very common recipe kit beer, um, and they're very, very easy to make. They're very forgiving and uh, can be fermented at higher temperatures as well, just like the Saison. And then finally, from Germany, the first is actually Hefeweizen. So Hefeweizen is a really pretty easy beer to make. It's very tolerant of different fermentation temperatures and you can get a lot of really, really great flavor out of it. It's one of those beers that I really recommend people start out with early on because you can get a ton of amazing flavor out of these beers without really all that much effort. Um, they're ready very quickly. They don't require any sort of aging or conditioning time. And while there is a lot of high wheat and high protein content that can cause some issues during an all grain mash, um, if you're doing brew in a bag or brew in an all-in-one electric system, it's actually not really any harder to make these beers than any others. Generally, do recommend if you are doing an all grain Hefeweizen recipe, just mix in some rice hulls into the overall thing and you're gonna be fine. The next German style that I think is actually really a good option is an alt beer. So this is a uh, kind of semi-bitter amber colored beer from Germany that is somewhere between a lager and an ale. It's actually a really interesting style. It's been a long time since I made one, but I think I actually need to make another one soon. They're, they're really very good, they're unique. They're somewhere between like a Vienna lager and um, an American amber ale in terms of hoppiness and color. They're not really hard to make, especially if you live in a slightly cooler climate and you're fermenting at room temperature that's in the 60s. You can use a Kolsch yeast or you can use a German ale yeast in these to make a very, very good alt beer. You can also sub in some different uh, yeasts in there as well to get a similar result. And lastly, Vienna Lager. Vienna Lager is an absolutely delicious style. Um, it is kind of, it's an amber colored beer. If you've ever had Sam Adams uh, classic Boston Lager before, that's a Vienna Lager style. They are very malty, they are very satisfying, um, and they come out a beautiful kind of dark red color usually. Now, if you're using a uh, dry lager yeast like Saf Lager W3470 or Fermentus S23, you can ferment the Vienna Lager at a relatively high temperature, about 65 degrees even, um, and you can get a good lager out of it. So honestly, don't feel like lagers are not an option for you if you're just starting out brewing. They're really not all that difficult to do. And with the proper yeast selection, which it doesn't take that much effort to learn more about yeast and how they impact the beer, lagers really can be quite easy and not really any more difficult than ales. 
So if you're new to the hobby, first of all, welcome. This is an awesome hobby and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. I really hope I helped you narrow down at least some of the first couple of types of beer that you might wanna make to get the hang of how this whole thing works. If they don't turn out exactly the way you wanted them to at first, don't give up. You're gonna continue to improve and build skill as you brew more, so just keep it up. If you enjoyed the video, you learned something, you liked the content, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe button as well, and don't forget to comment down below as well. If you're new here, welcome. I got plenty more content like this, so do check the channel out for some more of that stuff. If you wanna support the channel, please consider picking up some merchandise like this t-shirt. You can find this and many other types of things in the merchandise store, which is either down below the description box or in the description box. Also, I have a Patreon. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me out and helping make this channel what it is. Please also see my channel membership options, the super thanks button as well, and an Amazon store I have where you can find some of my recommended brewing equipment, which will help you out. If you're a brand new brewer, I also have a sub list in there that shows some great equipment that can help you get started with brewing. If you wanna follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer, so check that stuff out for some more frequent content. And last but not least, if you're still here, thank you very much for being here. It means the world to me, and I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. So, until the next one, cheers.